Today on Muddy Beards, I'm going to be installing this auto meter transmission temperature gauge in my 2005 Chevrolet Silverado Project Half Ton Tow Rig. Alright, well if you've been watching the channel then you know that I've been doing a series of videos on my 2005 Chevrolet Silverado. It is a 1500 half ton and I've been making some videos just on some work that I'm doing to make it a more reliable and better performing tow rig. And in the last video, um, I installed a higher capacity all aluminum transmission pan. And I installed a larger transmission cooler. So really the idea was is to make sure that my transmission temps were staying cool, especially while towing my Jeep to the trail. So um, really the next step is, is to install a transmission temperature gauge. Um, these trucks did not come factory uh, equipped with one and so I'm going to be installing one today so that I can actually monitor my transmission temperatures. And so the first thing I'm gonna need to do is get underneath the truck and install the sending unit. Okay, so underneath the truck is where I'm going to be installing the actual sending unit into the transmission. Um, the sending unit just looks like this. Um, it comes with the kit. I already put a little bit of Teflon tape along around the uh, threads and I attached the wire to it. You have to get yourself a little ring terminal and some 18 gauge wire, which of course doesn't come with the kit. Thanks, Autometer. So there's a few places that you can put this. Um, I've looked it up on the internet, read some forums and stuff, and um, there's definitely some debate about it. Some people um, will actually like splice this into um, one of the transmission cooler lines, um, and they say you get a really good reading there. Um, I've had other people say that you should just, you know, tap the pan somewhere, you know, on the side and actually read the temperature of the fluid inside the pan. However, other people say that there is a, and I can't really get the camera in here at all to see it, but if you look at the linkage, um, where all the linkage and stuff goes in, right here on the transmission, just right above it, where my finger is up here, there is a, I believe it's called the transmission um, pressure port um, that just has a 12 millimeter bolt in it, or 12 millimeter uh, bolt head in it, and you can unbolt that and um, it's threaded MPT already and I can just put the sending unit straight in there. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that port um, and I guess the theory behind that is, is that you're actually plugging it directly into the internals of the transmission and so you're reading you know the working temperature of the internal of the transmission so not the temperature of the fluid in the pan not the temperature of the fluid in the lines but actually the temperature of the fluid um, in the transmission itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get a socket and a, and a ratchet up there, it's kinda hard to get to, and then I'm gonna thread in the uh, sending unit. All right, now, with the sending unit in, um, I ran the single wire, the sending unit just has one wire. I actually just zip-tied it. I ran it all the way up the um, wiring harness for the transmission. And I was able to, I don't know if you can see it there, but I was able to pull it all the way up into the cab just following that uh, wiring harness. And then I just kind of tucked it back behind the insulation and ran it across here to the firewall. And I was able to put it inside the, uh, the grommet here where the main wiring harness goes in. And that leads inside um, the truck. So inside the truck, in order to wire up this gauge, the auto meter gauge, it's actually pretty simple. You really only need a ground, you know, a power, and then the, the sending unit. So um, I already started taking the dash apart because you need to be able to do that. And of course you gotta pop the A pillar off, so I took that off. Um, and then as far as the power, I think this was kind of nifty. I actually went into the fuse box inside here and I did this so I didn't have to tap any kind of ignition wire. So you, for the power, you want an ignition hot source. And what I did was, is I actually located, let's see if I can pull this out, actually located a, um, one of the uh, ports here inside the fuse panel actually said for accessory. I tested it with a test light and it was an ignition hot source and it powered on when the ignition was on. And I bought one of these things. 
It's called an Adalink. And essentially what it is is that you plug it into the fuse panel and it fuses the original um, it, origins, it fuses the original port with an, you know a 10 amp and then you get to put in an additional one and it has a wire built into it and it's a super easy way to tap for power it's very convenient it's safer this way it's still fused so it's still a fusible link now and it's a perfect way to find an ignition source without having to tap into you know like an ignition wire or maybe the battery wire or something like that so that's pretty convenient as far as the ground, I found a ground I could tap into um, back in here um, with a bolt into the uh, metal. And then all I did was I've now ran these wires up through the dash into the A-pillar. And so what I need to do now is, is I actually have to uh, measure out where I want to put the gauge. I gotta drill holes inside the stock, stock A-pillar. Um, and then I can actually feed the wires through. I can put my A pillar back on um, and I can actually get this thing all hooked up. Okay, for the actual gauge mounting, um, the kit comes with a um, just a single um, gauge A pillar mount. And then of course you gotta take your plastic trim piece off the A pillar of your truck. Um, when it was still in the truck, I, I uh, test fitted it to make sure to see where I wanted it and then I marked it. And so for actual installation, um, what the instructions say to do is you need a 3 16 drill bit um, and then you got to drill four holes in the actual gauge mount and your trim piece so that you can actually put these little uh, black plastic clips in. These little clips actually hold the mount into your factory trim so that you can mount the gauge in it. So I'm going to go ahead and get those holes drilled on the uh, mount first and then I'll line it up on here, mark it, and drill the holes for this so I can actually get this mounted. All right, so I guess it's gonna mount um, just like that. And so really the last thing I gotta do um, is on the back side, I need to drill a hole behind the actual A-pillar mount um, into my uh, stock trim piece um, that's big enough for me to get the wiring harness through. Um, so I can actually put the wires through so I can wire the gauge up. So that's the last hole I gotta drill. All right, so I got the holes drilled, got the uh, gauge uh, mount mounted into my trim piece here on the A-pillar. And the last thing I really need to do is wire up the actual headlight for the gauge. Um, it just comes with some pigtails, you know, a power and a ground. So to tap it into um, the headlight switch, all I did was took my test light, turn the light on and off, turn my lights on and off, and I found the wire that um, would turn on or gave power for when the headlights were on. Um, and it's this wire right here. It's like brown and white. And so all I did was tap into the power. Um, it's behind here because I taped it all up. And I you know, just uh, soldered it in. Um, and then I just found the same ground that I used for the grounding the, the uh, gauge, I ground the light too. And so now, whenever I turn the switch on, hey, the headlight works, or the little gauge light works. So. Really, all I have left to do, you see I kind of got my mess of wires here, but I got to pull the wires through the hole I drilled. Um, I'll get my gauge actually pushed in there and hooked up. You know, all the harnesses and, or all the wires go into their correct spot here on the back of the gauge. I can plug the headlight or the uh, little gauge light in and then put my trim piece back together, get my dash all put back together and I can actually go test this thing out. All right, so here's the whole dash put back together. And there is my new auto meter transmission temperature gauge all installed there on the A pillar. Um, looks pretty clean. I actually think it turned out really well. Um, the only thing I think I would change is, um, you know, the, the uh, gauge mount comes in just black. And obviously my trim is kind of like that dark gray color. I know you can go to paint like auto paint stores and uh, probably get some color match paint, which I may still do later. But for now, I think it looks pretty good. 
And so I've been driving around town today, um, actually quite a bit, and uh, you can see there the temperature is right around 160. Um, it is a 67 degree day, so um, not real warm out, but uh, you know, that's kind of like right on the low end of kind of normal operation operating temperature for these things from what I've read on the internet. So um, it looks like my modifications are keeping it cool and now I have a really good way to actually monitor my transmission temperatures. Thank you for tuning into Muddy Beards. If you liked the video and it was helpful, please give us a thumbs up and uh, you should click the subscribe button below. Check out some of our other stuff. Um, check out Project Half Ton Tow Rig playlist and you can see all the modifications that I'm doing. Um, to make this thing a more reliable and better performing tow rig. Um, so thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you on the trail.